It was the transatlantic steamer, Arctor, that had first noticed something was wrong on its voyage to the port of Lee from Philadelphia. The Actor passed the lighthouse on Flannan Islands on the night of the 15th of December, 1900, and the crew saw that its light was off. After docking in Leith, three days later, the news was passed on to the Northern Lighthouse Board that something was amiss on Flannan, a mystery that was explored in the 2019 film The Vanishing. The board dispatched the lighthouse relief tender ship Hesperus to investigate. Arriving at the island on Boxing Day, the ship's captain, Jim Harvey, sounded its horn and sent up a flare, hoping to alert the three lighthouse keepers, James Ducat, Thomas Marshall and William MacArthur. There was no response. Disembarking from the Hesperus, relief lighthouse keeper Joseph Moore set off up the 160 steep steps to the lighthouse. Three giant blackbirds perched on the cliffs above him cast their beady eyes on his progress. Reaching the lighthouse compound and entering the living quarters, Moore noticed that the clock on the kitchen wall had stopped. The table was set for a meal that had never been eaten and a chair had been toppled over. A canary in a cage was the only signs of life. Returning to the eastern landing, Moore reported his findings to the captain of the Hesperus. Harvey sent another two sailors to shore, and then Moore began looking for signs of life. After a thorough search of the lighthouse complex it turned up nothing but a set of oilskins, suggesting that one of the keepers had ventured out in just his shirt sleeves. The men turned their attention to the landing platform on the west side of the island. There was plenty of evidence that the island had recently been hit by a massive storm. A supply box had been smashed open and its contents strewn across the ground despite being over a hundred feet above sea level. Iron railings on the side path had been bent and twisted out of shape. Part of a railway track had been torn from its concrete moorings and a huge rock weighing more than a ton had been displaced. Turf had also been ripped up from the tops of the cliffs 200 feet above sea level. There were no signs of the three keepers. So what happened? Poor fellows, they must have been blown off the cliffs or drowned trying to secure a crane or something like that, was one of Harvey's conclusions in the telegram to the Northern Lighthouse Board after the Hesperus returned to port. Harvey had left Moore and three sailors behind to tend to the light and continue the search. They scarred the island for the three missing men, but found nothing. Arriving on the island on December 29th, the board superintendent, Robert Muirhead, began an investigation into the keeper's disappearance. Muirhead knew all of the three missing men well. Examining the oilskin that had been left behind, he concluded it belonged to William MacArthur. After going over a week of wreckage in the western London, Muirhead speculated that Marshall and Ducat must have headed out into the storm to try and secure the equipment stored there. When they did not return, Muirhead summarised that MacArthur must have ventured out to try and find them. From evidence which I was able to procure, Muirhead concluded in his official report, I was satisfied that the men had been on duty up until dinner time on Saturday the 15th of December, that they had gone down to secure a box in which the moorings ropes, landing ropes, etc. were kept, but which was secured in a crevice of rock about 110 feet above sea level, and that an extra large sea had rushed up the face of the rock and had gone above them and coming down with immense force that had swept them completely away. But as far as the public was concerned, Muirhead's report wasn't the end of the story. Speculation was soon rife. Theories more suited to the Middle Ages were soon doing the rounds. As such as these men had gobbled up by a giant sea serpent or whisked away by a huge seabird. One theory had the three men leave the island on a boat to try and escape deaths while others had spurred them away in skeletal crew of a ghost ship. Some even thought that the men had been kidnapped by foreign spies. More doubt was cast in the official investigation, with the emergence of a logbook supposedly containing several baffling entries between the 12th and 15th of December. In the first entry, Marshall was supposed to have written the great storm of the likes he which he had never seen before had hit the island. He continued that Ducat was unusually quiet when the storm had hit, and MacArthur, a big burly man, not known to have much of a sensitive side, was weeping. A second entry was all three men, 
Crane in the Eye of the Monstrous Storm, and the third and final entry, supposedly written on the 15th, states that the storm had passed and all was now calm. On hearing about the existence of these logbrook entries, many questioned the idea that the men had been swept out to sea. If anyone had died, surely whoever wrote the 15th of December entry would have mentioned this. There had been another explanation. There was indeed another explanation. The logbook entries were injected into the story several years after Marshall, Ducat and MacArthur disappeared. There is no evidence that they ever existed, as the 14-time journalist Mike Dash discovered after carrying out his own investigation. So dismissing both fake logbook entries and the fanciful tales of sea serpents and ghost ships, what are we left with? Three theories have emerged over the years that seek to explain the men's disappearance. The first is based on the character of William MacArthur. MacArthur was of all kinds an ill-tempered man who was quick to settle an argument with his fists. It had been speculated that he could have started up a fight on the western landing which led to all three men falling to their deaths from the cliffs. The second theory is that one of the men, again probably MacArthur, murdered the other two, ditched their bodies into the sea and threw himself off the cliffs. While both theories add a level of bloodthirsty juiciness to the mystery, there is no evidence that either a fight or a murder took place. It is of course perfectly possible for men to be confined quarters to rub each other up the wrong way, to the point where they snap and all hell breaks loose, especially when one of them has a history of violence. But without bodies or crime scenes to examine, these two theories will forever remain mere speculation. The much more plausible explanation is that Marshall and Ducat were swept away while trying to secure the supplies and equipment on the West Landing. Where his colleagues failed to return, MacArthur headed out to find them and he, too, perished in the storm. Why anyone would head out in such a dangerous expedition when they had, could have stayed safe in the lighthouse can be explained by the fact that Marshall had previously been fined five shillings for losing his equipment in a previous gale. As a family man, losing five shillings in 1900 was no laughing matter, so it's no surprise if securing equipment was more important to Marshall than his personal safety. Of course, the real reason for the disappearance of James Ducat, Thomas Marshall and William MacArthur will probably be never known. However, these three men met their fate on a cold December night back in 1900. Be it by accident, misadventure or design, the Flannan Islands mystery remains one of the most baffling episodes in Scottish maritime history. <laughs>